Hi guys, I'm back from New York. It was a great trip, but I missed you terribly and my cooking. I had to be out all those days. It was freezing. I have chapped lips. We couldn't wait to get back to Florida, so here we are. And I got a really good, easy warming dish. It's more New York weather now than Florida because it's in the 70s here, but it's delicious and it's simple. I did a little bit of prep work. I'll take you through it and we'll talk and fill you in on all the good stuff. I'm going to put a little oil in the pan. I'm using my good one because this is going to saute our meat and we're going to eat it and we want the very best, right? So that's that. Put a little oil in the pan. I chopped a half of a yellow onion. Okay, let's get that in there. See, already I know I have to get it up to medium. It's so hard to tell temperature on electric or induction, but it is what it is. And you guys have been working with me, you know. I hope you enjoy all the shorts I did. I was trying to stay active and connected to you. We hadn't been to LaGuardia Airport in years, and they redid the whole thing so that hologram or that water art fall was amazing. And just the terminal itself, it was really, really good. The food court, places I had never heard of, restaurants and things, they had such good stuff. Seriously, who was there that I, oh, Shake, everybody's there. Shake Shack, uh, all kinds of Mexican, pizza, gourmet, you name it, it was there. And we loved it. Easy flight there and back, but good to be home. Ignore the phone, that's collectors looking for money we don't have. I always tell you that. I'm going to switch to a wooden spoon. See, spam, she's telling me. Collectors that want our money that we don't have. Okay, so you're going to saute the onions. Oh, I didn't even tell you guys what I'm making. This is the simplest, easiest, most delicious shepherd's pie. This is Janine's 30-minute shepherd pie. I got this way before I cooked on Facebook, long before I went on YouTube, but I did get it from YouTube about, I don't know, 10 years ago. I went on looking for shepherd's pie. I didn't know how to make it. I love it. I would only get it in Irish pubs because that's all I would see it on the menu, right? And I went on and I Googled on YouTube and I found this guy, a young man, making it by himself on a stove, real simplistic. I said, wait a minute, I got to try that. So I did and I said, this is as good as any pub I've ever eaten it in. And you know I don't lie, so I won't lie to you. Look at that, smelling delicious. We got the onions going here. She's going to saute them a little bit, get them ready for the ground beef. So, yeah, we encountered some snow. I did a short on snow from our little one-bedroom co-op in Glen Cove that you guys know if you've been looking at the decor and all that. And I did some uh, research getting ready. We're going to go back in July this summer spend summer in New York and redo that entire kitchen. We're going to gut the little white kitchen from the 60s. I am super excited because I want to cook. I got to cook there and you're going to come with me on the journey, I hope, and watch me get through several days, if not a week, without a kitchen. I don't know how I'm going to cook and I don't want to eat out. I don't like to eat out every night, renovating or not. So I'll probably will take my little... Uh, my induction burner. I need to get another one anyway, so I might buy another one there. And we'll make do like we did when we did this kitchen. This induction pan burner got me through. Two weeks without a kitchen here. Was it two weeks or more? It was at least that, right? But I did. I want to make spaghetti. I fried stuff. Whatever we could do, we did. Okay, so now that's the time. We'll give it another second. Okay, and then let me go over ingredients while we're waiting them to saute a little bit so you're not terribly bored with me. I hope you missed me. And thank you to my new subscribers. Hello to all of you and welcome. John, Gary, Marilyn, and Kitty I had said hi to last week. Oh, and I was telling you guys in the last video, cooking the uh, thing, that you needed 500 subscribers to go live, which you know I'm almost there. I'm not yet. But just as I said that video to you guys, I'm looking at my uh, YouTube while we were in transit, and it said they made a new thing now, YouTube. You don't have to. All you have to be is 
clear of record, so to speak. I don't know what that means, like no violations. And you have to verify your phone number, which I did. I think you have to do that to be on YouTube anyway and have a channel. So uh, I think I could go live. I don't know if I want to go live. I don't know what to say. If I do, I'll probably just say shout out to all of you. But we'll test it. And I'm going to see if you guys let me know if you're getting the post. I can post certain things. Like I posted a thank you to new subscribers. I posted um, something upcoming. And we'll see. You got to talk to me or otherwise I can't communicate. I don't know. Okay, this is a pound of ground beef. I'm using 8020 here by Greenwise. It's a little bit better brand here at Publix. But if you want to use sirloin, use the beef of your choice. If you want to go grass fed, go right ahead. Do whichever you like. And you just get that I'm being delicato, which is not necessary. You know, it's not me. Okay, we put that all in, and we're going to go with my favorite. You know my favorite chopper here. I don't think I want to use it. I'm going to use my wind spoon first. Let's see if we can go up a little bit in heat. You want to ground this now. Brown the whole thing. Okay, so you're following me so far? It's just saute some onions, and I'll tell you right now, he didn't do this in the recipe. He didn't do this in the recipe. He, he could put me in them. <laughs> He's focusing on my chopped meat. Um, he didn't add, I added the extra onions to give it a little bit more, because you know why? It's so simplistic and not a lot going on. I wanted to give it a little more flavor. We're cutting so many corners, not doing traditional. Traditionally, shepherd's pie, which this is called, is done with lamb. Uh, you could use lamb in my version as well. Not, not a problem, but it's done with lamb. It's done with fresh vegetables rather than frozen, which we're going to use, okay? And it's made with a homemade gravy rather than McCormick, which we're going to use. And these little tips and shortcuts do not take away from the flavor of this dish. It's absolutely delicious. Another thing, for the mashed potatoes that go on top, I did ahead of time for you guys off camera... I made um, the mashed potatoes fresh from russet potatoes. I did three potatoes, and that goes on the top, but you don't have to. If you want, you can, equal time, you can um, use the ready-made potatoes, mashed potatoes, and that would be just as delicious. But I felt bad because I said I'm shortcutting so much that it's okay to just tell you and then you do as you do, however you want. You want to take a little longer, let's say you have a company, you say, you know, I want to amp it up a bit. I want to put a little extra flavoring. You could put a little extra this or that. I'm not going to hurt it. Like, you know, I love my gravy master. If you wanted to beef up the beef flavor, put a little gravy master. I'm not going to hurt nobody. Okay, we just got to get this all browned because once it's brown, the next step goes really quick. It's simple. It's done. Saute your onions. And like I said, he didn't even saute onions. So you brown your meat. And I'll repeat myself. You brown your meat. You add one cup of frozen mixed vegetables from Bird's Eye. Simple. Any brand you like. The frozen mixed vegetables. The one with the string bean, corn, carrots, and peas. You want that mix because it's a little bit more hearty, you know? You get more into it. We're getting there now. We are getting there. Hang with me, guys. So what else is new? Let me see. The baby had her baptism. Got to see lots of family. And that was good. And I had lunch with my great nephew Milo, if you've seen the short for that. He was thrilled. He's my best YouTube fan. You know what he says to me? Angeline, I love your YouTube. I'm, I'm going to like all your videos. I said, go ahead, Milo. Go ahead. <laughs> How cute. He's like eight, okay? Milo is eight. But he is adorable, and I love him to death. And if you listen or you watch this video, Milo, Angeline loves you. You're my best fan. I told everybody just now on YouTube. Okay, so that's that. Here we go. And you're going to leave the oil in, in there because we used a good one and we want the flavor, right? Okay, next step. 
Let's do the gravy first. I use the less sodium. You all know how I'm obsessed with the low sodium. You put a packet of that in, okay? Brown gravy. And what it is, it has all those additives already and a cup of cold water. Let me hold back a little bit. Let me mix it a little bit. See? That's where all the juicy, delicious flavor is for this dish. I'll tell you right now. As soon as I seen him add that, I knew. It has the thickening agent. You don't have to worry about a cornstarch flurry, right? It has all of that going on for it and flavor. And then the frozen vegetables are the last component in it. See? This is the reason, and you want to let this saute a little bit, let it dry down a bit. Now I'm going to add the vegetables. I'm going to put this on high. Let's see, let's see what maximum sear does. Let's see what maximum sear does. Never did that before. Okay. Here we go. One cup of frozen vegetables. See the mix? It's got the string bean, the carrots, the corn, and the peas. Okay. Traditionally, they would just use fresh, you know? Look what a time saver this is. Okay. And there, my people, is the beginning base of your shepherd's pie with tremendous flavor. That can be done in 30 minutes. You figure 15 minutes prep and we have a warm oven heating at 400. I have mashed potatoes ready made. If you want to do the same, you could do that. If you wanted to buy the already made, reheat them with a little bit of milk to whip them up, you can do that. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, God, I got to be honest, I haven't made this dish in several years. I haven't. I don't know why. It's one of my faves. I love it. I love it so much. It's probably because when we were in Mineola, we used to live near a cool pub. What was that? The St. James? We lived near the St. James, and they serve it there. So I, I was eating it pretty often there. All right. I'll put a little bit more of that water. See, because we want to get... Look at that. And you want to do that. You see it thickening? That's the, that's the McCormick's gravy. It's thickening, which is what you want saves you the time of having to add cornstarch or a slurry. See? You want it to get thicker. And it's doing just that. And then it'll thicken yet again. There was a dot, dot left. That's good to moisten the mashed potatoes. It will thicken yet again in the oven. I'm going to do this one more minute with you guys, and then I'm going to show you to put it in the pan and prep it with fresh potatoes. And then we'll be able to come after that and show you the final. want to get a little bit of that extra moisture out. Okay. Not bad on this high sear. I'm still learning it, as you know. All righty. I think we're ready. I think we're there. All right, I'm going to leave that heat. I'm going to let it keep going while I bring over. I'm going to bring over. The, here's a casserole we're going to use. Okay. I'm going to go and get, and put that there. I'm going to go bring over my mashed potatoes. And my spoon. Okay. We didn't need that tonight. Let's move these things around a bit. Okay. Not bad, as they say. Not bad. And you see, I got some fresh. I made them about an hour ago. I don't want them more creamy because they're going to bake. So I don't like them too watery. But that's a preference thing. If you want them a little bit more juicy, add more milk. And get a little paprika for color. Also, traditionally, in the... Uh, 
how would you say? Salt, pepper, and pepper. In the lamb uh, version, I believe on top of the potatoes, they put cheddar cheese, shredded cheddar cheese. I don't do that. I'm not a fan of the cheese in this because I like the natural flavor of it. I got to get a spoon to get it out of there and into there. Out of the pan and into here. So let's try to do that now. Okay. See? It couldn't get easier. I gotta tell you guys, it couldn't get easier. But the flavor, I'm telling you, you won't be sorry. Trust me on this one and make it. See? Now it's at the right thickness. I got rid of that excess moisture. Because you don't want it watery or soggy. Look at the consistency. See what I'm doing with the gravy? I'm looking to make sure it's not too watery. It has a thickness to it. The thickener in the, the powder gravy did its job, so to speak. Okay, let's continue. Get this in there. And you want the mix of the, you know, if you don't like string beans, you could use just the peas and carrots, you know. Not going to hurt nobody. Again, make it yours. If you wanted to do this with real lamb and use all my frozen and ready-made things, you could. Could probably even do it with pork. That would be something else. Now here, Mrs. Delicato is tired of spooning over. You knew that wasn't gonna last long. <laughs> okay, let me get this in here. Give it a little rinse, a little rinse. Okay, let me shut this off. How do you shut this off? We know we had a problem with that. All right, it doesn't go off again by itself. Spread it out. It's got a nice thickness. And now the fun part. Now we get to put those mashed potatoes on and then put it where it belongs. It's hot in here now, boy. Okay. And you don't have to be fancy with this. Okay. You just want to get them on there. And again, as thick or as little as you like. I love my mashed potatoes on here, so I go rather thick. I remember one time we didn't have enough and I had to spread it, really spread it. See? Let's do like that. You could get fancy. You could pipe it on if you were having company for this dish. You know, you could fill a pastry bag and get really crazy with yourself. I'm not doing that. <laughs> it's just been in May. We're home from Florida. I mean, from New York. And I mean, I eat this all year. It doesn't matter where I am. I'm in Florida. I'll put the AC on to eat this. That's how good it is. Okay. I'll eat this with the air conditioner on. I love it. My fast shepherd's pie that you will not regret making. I'm going to try to get a little fancy. Let's see. Let's see if we can do this. Do a dollop. Okay, that's that. And like I said, a little bit of pepper. Looks like a lot, but it's not. A little bit of salt, so I didn't season the potatoes. Okay, you know I don't like salt much, but I do it on here. And this is really just for color because we're not putting the cheese on or anything, you know? See, a little, little sprinkle of that. So when it comes out of the oven, it looks pretty. Now it goes in an oven for 400 degrees at about uh, 20 minutes. Okay, cook beautifully. Let me bring it over there, shut this. Okay. Here she comes, and that's the beautiful shepherd's pie. Okay, and I'll put the the temperature and time because you know my crazy stove it cooked differently. You know, four hundred was a little too high, three seventy five for a difference. I'll put it in the description. Okay, now look how beautiful it is. That's why I put the paprika. Now we're going to taste this delicious. Nish, I'll try to get a nice piece out.
without making it crazy. First piece is always the hardest, right? With any casserole or pie. Oh my God, look at that. Smoke, let me put, show you from this side. See, got a lot of those. Look at that. Beautiful. It's very hot. <laughs> it's very hot. I'm gonna get a little bit of salt. And I'm gonna have to brave it for you guys. I'm gonna have to brave it. It's piping hot here. <laughs> I've burnt my fingers, hands, lips, and everything on camera. What's another burn for you? What's another burn for you? I'm dedicated. Okay, let's get a little bit of that. See, a little crusty. I love that. I promise you, smoke, I'm scared. I'm literally scared. This is so delicious, though. You got to try this. Guys, you got to try this. Easy restaurant tasting shepherd's pie. Now, oh, there's smoke coming out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every bit as beefy, delicious as I remember me making it. Just as good as any pub out there. I'll challenge them if anybody thinks I'm lying. This is superb. And like I said, I'm not a big fan, but I think cheese would just enhance it. Put some shredded cheddar on there. Can't go wrong. Mm. There you go, guys. Easy shepherd's pie. In 30 minutes, all the veggies, all the deliciousness, just fantastic. Okay, catching the next one. And next one, somebody asked for a pasta. I think we're going to do pasta primavera. I'm not sure. Don't hold me to it, but we're going to have something fresh and different next as well.